Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've gone back in now on a different setting, and I think we're back up. We're going to be going there for solutions in our nation's capital. On Friday, we will take a tour of our nation's capital. The headquarters, led by Rick Green of Wall Builders and Kenyon Curtin will be reaching and helping with that. And then the morning prayer for ladies will be held by Tracy Alexander. The morning prayer for men will be held by Reverend Pierre Bynum. And we encourage you to be a part of that. Morning praise and worship will be Charles Billingsley, worship leader, Thomas Road Baptist Church. And, of course, comments by Kenyon and and Tony and Wayne Grudem and others, Congressman uh, Scalise, and so forth. And then uh, there's going to be uh, uh, a, pro a part of the program at about 11 o'clock, Standing with Israel, the solution of Standing with Israel. And Joel Rosenberg will share that with us. And then the threat of radical Islam by Brigitte Gabrielle, and then Standing for Biblical Truth, David and Jason Benham, Benham. and uh, Christians and the Constitution by Judge Roy Moore, and Raising a Cultural Impact Team, Gina Gleason, Cultural Impact Team Leader with Salt and Light, and Transforming Your Church into a house of worship. How do you do that? You'll hear from Bishop Douglas Small and Congressman Vicki Hartzler will talk about raising up a new generation of public servants. Ruling the city at the gates, Pastor Jim Way, president of Capernaum, Capernaum Ministries will be sharing that and we look forward to that as well. Supporting your spouse when they stand for truth. Marion Johnson, wife of Dr. Ron Johnson, Living Stones Church, Crown Point, Indiana, will be sharing that. Raising a cultural impact team again with Gina Gleason, and we thank the Lord for it. Uh, pastors and uh, growing uh, together and learning together. And uh, that will be during Wednesday and Thursday. Then on Friday, on Friday there will be a boot camp prayer for ladies. On that same day, Friday afternoon, will be a boot camp prayer for men led by my brother and our dear friend Dick Simmons. The morning prayer for ladies will be done, of course, by Tracy and Reverend Pierre Bynum, the chaplain for FRC. And Eric Stanley, senior legal counselor, will be sharing solutions with us as well. Bishop Wellington Boone, all of these people will be sharing the solutions that they have for us. Now, in reference to solutions, I'm going to move to a little bit different subject. Not totally different, but before I do, I want to remind you that this week there's supposed to be a vote on H.R. 36. H.R. 36 is a bill that you need to encourage your congressman to vote for. It is the bill that is being talked about, and uh, it is the Pain Capable Unborn Child Act. Pain Capable Unborn Child Act. Now, folks, I wish we could do away with murdering babies 100%. But until we do, we have to do it in little increments. And one of those increments is to be able to say, if a baby is capable of feeling pain, we're going to pass a law that says you cannot abort that baby if it's old enough to be capable of feeling pain. And so, call your representative's office. Now, I know you're not going to get your representative. You're going to get some fluky. You're going to get an aide or an intern or something else. 
but call them and tell them, be nice to them, don't tell them I call them plukies, but be nice to them and tell them that you are a constituent of their boss and uh, that you would like to pass along a message to him that you, and give them your name, where you're from, your zip code, and so forth, let them know that you want him to vote yes on H.R. 36. H.R. 36, if passed, will save a whole bunch of babies. However, if your congressman votes against H.R. 36, he is voting for murdering tiny, innocent babies. Folks, it's that simple. It's good versus bad. H.R. 36 is a good bill. It could be better, but it is a good bill. And it is a bill that will save many, many, many unborn babies from the murder in the womb. So, please, please, please encourage your congressman to vote for H.R. 36. Now, I want us to shift gears just for a little bit because a part of solutions, ladies and gentlemen, is that we have people that mentor us. I've talked about this before on this show, but uh, I go way back. I was a new preacher kid, just got saved, and one of my first mentors was Dr. J. Vernon McGee. And after J. Vernon McGee, I had another mentor called Dr. G. James Kennedy. And I had another mentor named Dr. Jerry Falwell. And another mentor named uh, Dr. Adrian Rogers. And another mentor that's still alive, Charles Stanley. And another mentor, my pastor, James David Manning, in New York, where it's my privilege to serve as an associate pastor to him. But ladies and gentlemen, whatever I have been able to accomplish and to do was because of my mentors. In fact, the matter is, talking about wives after spending 48 years, one month, and 14 days with my beautiful wife, Barbara Julianne Stevens, just before she went home to be with the Lord, <coughs> excuse me, she suggested that because many of my mentors had gone on to heaven, that I should get a new mentor, and she recommended Dr. James David Manning. And so, I asked him to be my mentor, and he has been. So, mentorship is a great deal of the solutions to what we can become and what we can do in this country. And there's another gentleman that is a mentor of mine, and uh, I want to share about him, and, but I want to share more about what he has to say. His name is a dear, dear friend of mine, and his name is Jay Grimstead and his dear sweet wife, Jay Grimstead. Well, Jay has an organization called COR, Coalition on Revival, the unity of the local and the global body of Christ. And this is what he says. It appears to me that a critical moment has come in history of the Christian church for a number of theologians from many denominations to forge, to create, to distill, to give birth to a new global generic statement of faith. And he's calling that a GGSF, a global generic statement of faith which could happily be signed by members of most Protestant denominations, organizations, schools, mission agencies. And he said, I'm asking COR, Coalition on Revival Board of Directors, theologians and key Christian leaders to allow COR to attempt this massive project and to travel with me on this exciting venture. Our hope, he said, and expectation is that it should be possible to arrive at a consensus of solutions. 
Now, he didn't use the word solutions. I did. But we can arrive at a consensus opinion of what constitutes the essential basics of Christian doctrine among Bible inerrists, such as, and then there's five things that I believe are a part of the solution that my mentor, Jay Grimstead, has given to us. First of all, the nature of the triune God and his activity in creation, in redemption, and providence. Number two, the doctrine of man. What is man? Who is man? Even the Bible says, what is man? That thou have taken notice of him. The third part of the solution is the doctrine of Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and the Holy Spirit. Number four, the doctrine of redemption. How do we get saved? The doctrine of redemption. And number five, the doctrine of the church, the kingdom of God, and the great commission. I want to say thank you to my mentor, Jay Grimstead for sending that to me, and I want you to pray with me and pray for it. Now, I want to move to another mentor, a new mentor of mine, relatively so. But uh, 28 years ago, when my wife and I were considering coming back to Southern California, we told God, we want to go back home. We want to go back to Southern California. That's where my wife's parents were, uh, and that's where her grandparents were for our kids. And so we said, Lord, we want to go back to California. So every year we would indeed visit California. And as we visited California, uh, we met a man that became my mentor for more than 25 years. A man by the name of Doyle Braden. Doyle Braden. Doyle Braden and his dear wife Betty were our mentors for more than 25 years. And recently, I was the beneficiary not only of having him my mentor uh, here at the church and here in our convention called Orange County Southern Baptist Association, but I had the privilege to receive a message from him recently about a new man in his life. And that was a man by the name of Bob Sharp. Bob Sharp has been a Detroit talk show host, businessman, seller, author, pastor, evangelist, educator, and uh, so forth. And he has written three books, including the bestseller on Amazon. Now he is writing the most important book. And my mentor, Doyle Braden, recommends it, and I recommend it. And I want you to go and get a copy of it, and I will give you right now an incentive to get his book. I don't get any kickback, uh, but I do think it's a good book. I think it's a good book for two reasons. I like the title. And the second reason is my mentor, Doyle Braden, recommended it highly. Now, the new book is How Your Church, How Your Church Can Change the World. Ladies and gentlemen, that's got to be a good book. How your church can change the world. And in that book, and I've got one coming, and I'm going to talk more about it, and I'm going to introduce it to my solution workers in Washington when I'm back there. But that new book, How Your Church Can Change the World, describes something that I believe is very, very important. It's called the Andrew Effect in the church, in the community, and in the world. Bob Sharp lives in Homeland, California, and is a member of Hemet Valley Baptist Church in Hemet. Uh, Bob's story was on Unshackled. Uh, again, another radio program 
from the Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago, my mentor, J. Vernon McGee, said, Wiley, you ought to listen to that program. And so I dialed it in on my radio in the car, and for many years I listened to Unshackled, produced by Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago. And it began early, way back there in the 50s. And it's the longest-running radio drama program in history. Well, you see, Brother Bob, in his book, deals with the book, the Bible. And in that, he deals with a thing called Andrew Effect. Andrew Effect. Three parts of the Andrew Effect that I believe are important. The effect the church would have on the world if each Christian would bring one person to Christ every year. Can you imagine what would happen if every church member brought one new Christian to the church every year? We'd have an absolute explosion in Christianity. Number two, the annual doubling of the Christian population in a church, in a city, or in a region. And number three, it would indeed be evangelism by multiplication. And then Brother Bob shares another thing that we talk about here on this program quite often, and that is what the First Amendment really says about the separation of church and state. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, are prohibiting the free exercise thereof. There you have it. That's all that it says. That's why and what any thinking person would understand it meant. This is what the Founding Fathers meant it to say. That's what generations of Americans, U.S. presidents, the U.S. Congress, and the Supreme Court understood it to say until recently. This part of the First Amendment is known as the Establishment Clause. The attacks on religion and public life have nothing to do with constitutional law. They are a dishonest twisting of the words of our Founding Fathers to serve the interest of the ACLU and other atheist activists who want to destroy the Christian heritage of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, go to Amazon or wherever you buy books and I want to give you an incentive right now if you buy Bob's book I don't get a kickback but I do want you to come on my program I will book you on my program and let you tell us your experience in dealing with the book how your church can change the world if you're a pastor, if you're a layman, you're a man, you're a woman, if you read that book, I believe, based on my mentor, Doyle Braden's recommendation, and based on a long conversation I had with Bob Sharp, I'm convinced, ladies and gentlemen, that if you read that book, it will not only change your life, but it will change the world in which we live. I believe it will change the world. The title of the book is How Your Church Can Change the World. Written by Bob Sharp. Get his book and then come on the air with me. Now, before we close, we only have about uh, five or six minutes, but before we close, I want to remind you that, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible, God's book says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. The Family Research Council, where we're going for those solutions meetings, wrote a prayer based on Second Chronicles 7.14. I don't know if Kenyon Courton and Tony... Perkins, Pierre 
Bynum, I don't know who all participated, but here's what it says. There are over 2 million people that have signed on to this prayer, and I would ask you to do the same thing. Go to their website. Call the number 2, Thal. C-A-L-L, the number 2, and F-A-L-L. Call twofall.com. Call twofall.com. And you will find there a prayer that they have written that we pray at all of our services, and I pray usually on this program. And I'm going to repeat that prayer for you, and I want you to listen, and I want you to agree with me in prayer over this prayer. That is Wiley Drake's prayer, chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.'s prayer pastor of the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship, grandfather to my grandkids, and great-grandpa to my one great-grandbaby, and all that I am, I want this to be my prayer. And this prayer says, I will answer God's call to fall. On my knees, in humility and seek his face in repentance so that he might forgive my sin and heal our land. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank God for solutions that we'll learn in Washington from these men and women that will be teaching us. I thank God for the solution of evangelism we can learn from our dear friend Bob Sharp. I thank God for what I learned from my mentor, Doyle Braden, and others that are still alive, and those that are in heaven. And I praise God for what I learned from my dear sweet wife, Barbara Julianne Stevens, who's in heaven now. But I learned a lot from her. I learned how much she loved me, but I also learned that God gave me her to help me. That's why God called her a helpmate, because that's what she was. And I thank the Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you for my helpmate, Barbara. I know she's there in heaven with you, and I thank you, Lord, for saving her and turning her life towards you. I thank you that that Presbyterian minister, the husband of movie star Eve Arden, talked to my wife when she was just a teenager and said, do you know Jesus? And she said, I know about him. And that pastor, that Presbyterian pastor said, would you like to know him personally? Would you like to invite him into your heart and into your life? And my dear sweet wife, Barbara, said, yes, I sure would. And so long before we met, long before she was my wife, Long before any of that, she came to know Jesus as her Lord and as her Savior, for she prayed and invited him into her heart and into her life. And that pastor, that pastor led her to serve the Lord and led her to be cautious and careful when she chose a husband and led her to be the wife that God wanted her to be for me. And that dear sweet wife gave me three daughters and one son. The third daughter, all three of them, the third youngest is in her 30s, then I've got two in their 50s, and a son in his 30s. And I praise God for what he gave me through my life. Yes, God blessed us. And God will give you a blessing if you'll turn to him. Ladies and gentlemen, pray for me. A week from now on Monday, I will be flying to Washington, D.C., if the Lord wills. And I'll be staying there for a few days. And on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, I will be along with several other men and women, probably hundreds of us, 
learning about solutions for our nation's problem. Learning about solutions for our church. Learning about solutions for our children, our grandchildren. Learning about solutions that will glorify God and bless our nation. And then we'll be able to say, America, bless God. Because we will be answering God's call to worship and to praise Him. God bless you and have a great, great evening.